Right, hello again. We've been flying for almost 120 years and there are now more than 40,000 airports across the world. Um, so as a change from my regular GeoGuessr content, I wanted to put together a short video on 10 interesting airports that I found interesting for a number of reasons, whether it's to do with busyness or extreme location. Um, so I will be doing more of this content. So if you like it, please remember to subscribe and enjoy the video. So number one is Kaliningrad Davao Airport, which can be considered to be the oldest commercial airport in the world. When it was built in 1922, it was actually part of the free state of Prussia rather than Russia as it is today. The first scheduled flight route in the world was between Kaliningrad and Moscow. But when Kaliningrad became part of the Soviet Union after the Second World War, this airport fell out of favour. In May 1926, the world's first ever night passenger flight set off from Davao Airport in Kaliningrad to Berlin. So number nine is the only one that I've actually seen in person, uh, and it's Courchevel in the French Alps, which is part of the larger Three Valley Ski Resort, which is uh, basically the largest ski resort in the world. And Courchevel itself is known for being uh, quite sort of fancy and upmarket, so private planes are all the rage there. So the Altipor with its short 500 meter landing strip is known for its difficulty of approach. It can only be approached from one direction. Um, there's a kind of drop off the, off the end of the runway and part of the runway is at an incline of more than 18%. In terms of lighting or other instruments, there's next to nothing to help pilots land. Um, so it's very technical landing and you can see here what happens when that doesn't go quite right. So for number eight, I've kind of rolled two airports into one, and that is because Jeju to Seoul is the busiest flight route in the world, which is surprising, but domestic routes tend to beat international ones for passenger count, and a lot of the busiest routes are also in Asia, with Tokyo to Sapporo being in second place. Jeju is a volcanic island off the south coast of South Korea, and it's a very popular tourist destination for South Koreans. It's such a busy flight route that flights go about every 10 minutes between the two destinations. In 2018, there were 14.1 million passengers on the route. As with most routes, that's dipped since the pandemic, but it still has the number one spot. The island generally has an issue with excessive tourism, overcrowding, pollution, and the airport's currently operating over capacity, or at least it was prior to the pandemic. However, there are plans to build another major airport on the island to help alleviate some of those problems. Although for tourism in general, that may just contribute to further unrestrained growth and cause more difficulties for the residents of the island. So the next one at seven is Lukla Airport, AKA Tenzing Hillary Airport in Nepal. This is basically where you need to go if you want to climb Everest or get to base camp. Uh, you can see here how it's about a 40 mile trek from base camp. So this wouldn't be one of my videos if it didn't have some street view. Some of the best trekker coverage you can find anywhere actually begins at Lukla Airport. Um, and you can see here on a map exactly where it's positioned. And as we walk around on the street view coverage, you start to see where the runway comes in. And it has some similarities to Courchevel in terms of the drop and the gradient and also the difficulty of approach with weather conditions making it sometimes almost impossible to land. Due to the steepness of the surrounding terrain, it's also almost impossible to abort a landing and only pilots have completed at least 100 short takeoff and landing flights and have completed 10 flights into Lukla with a certified instructor are allowed to land at the airport. In at number six is Suida Real International Airport in central Spain, just south of Madrid. Spain went through an era about 15, 20 years ago of big infrastructural projects, including high-speed rail and airports, of which this was one. However, the planning of this one was slightly poor. Not only was the airport an inconvenient couple of hours away from Madrid, but opening was delayed by a good couple of years due to environmental reasons. And during this time, Madrid Barajas Airport expanded significantly, 
which more or less made Ciudad Real International a redundant airport. So, number five, I've gone for Uppington Airport in South Africa. Uppington Airport has the fourth longest runway in the world, at a length of about 4,900 metres. As you can see, there are a couple of others I could have gone for, but I wanted to have some Southern Hemisphere representation. Generally speaking, these airports all have some combination of high altitude and high temperature. And those factors affect the amount of lift an aircraft is able to generate. And higher speeds can compensate for this. So the long runway allows higher speed for takeoff and longer distance to slow down on the fast landings. Another thing pilots can do in these circumstances is actually try to shed weight. So sometimes pilots will circle prior to landing to burn through more fuel and effectively make the plane lighter for landing. So for number four, we have Princess Juliana Airport in St. Martin in the Caribbean, um, which is basically in here because of its very interesting approach to the runway and low flying planes. As you can see now, the beach is extremely close to the end of the runway. The runway is only about 2,300 meters long, which is barely long enough for heavy planes to land. So they really do need to fly very low over the beach, um, sometimes as low as 20 meters above people sitting on the beach below. And it is actually pretty dangerous, as you might expect. And a tourist was actually killed by the jet blast of a plane flying over. Not in this clip, though, I hasten to add. So for number three, we have Gibraltar Airport. So Gibraltar belongs to the UK technically, but sits at the bottom of the Iberian Peninsula. And very narrow strip of land which connects the rock to mainland Spain which basically means that for the construction of the airport there was no choice other than to have the runway intersecting with one of the main roads. A tunnel to take cars and pedestrians under the runway has been under construction for about 14 years but still hasn't been completed. Normally when a plane's landing the road is closed for about 10 minutes but sometimes it's up to about 30 minutes. Another thing that makes the airport interesting is that the specific territory that the airport lies on is heavily disputed by the UK and Spain. The UK was only granted access to use this territory in 1815 to help deal with the yellow fever outbreak. But the UK continued to use the land here ever since, although Spain does not recognise its sovereignty over the land where the airport is located. However, Spain and the UK do have an agreement over the joint operation of the airport. So at number two, we have Svalbard Airport, which is the northernmost airport in the world. It's located at Longyearbyen, and when I was trying to find out how to pronounce it, I worked out that people take it quite seriously. But to put into perspective just how far north it is, that's about 500 miles further north than the northernmost point of Alaska. Obviously, it's a very cold place with uh, record lows of colder than minus 40, but one of the things that makes Svalbard such a challenging airport is the fact that actually temperatures at northern latitudes are warming up. When it was constructed in the 70s there wasn't a huge amount of knowledge about permafrost engineering. So as the soil froze and thawed the runway became very uneven and has had to be reconstructed several times. Svalbard's extreme latitude really does create many dangers. Um, mining there has been in operation throughout the 20th century but isn't particularly safe and a lot of people have died. There have been air crashes, people killed by polar bears. So not the safest of places, really. You can see the main town of Longyearbyen just below in the footage here. There's also the Russian town of Barentsburg, which was named after the Dutchman who discovered Svalbard. So for number one, we have Hartsville Jackson Atlanta Airport in Georgia, USA, which has the impressive title of being the world's busiest passenger airport. Now, Beijing Airport is running it close Atlanta had 110 million passengers in 2019, which decreased to 75 million in 2021 due to COVID. To understand why Atlanta is such a busy airport, you have to look into the hub system of US domestic air travel. Here you can see the hubs of Delta Airlines, and despite the South and Southeast high population, it only really has one hub. So Atlanta handles a lot of the major routes and transfers for this region. The airport itself actually claims that it's within a two hour flight of 80% of the US's population. Although my own crude research using flight times and population distribution suggests that it actually might be closer to 60%. However, that's still a lot of people, and at least partially explains why Atlanta's the world's busiest airport. 
Thank you very, very much for watching the video. If you're new, please subscribe and I'll do more content like this alongside my usual GeoGuessr videos. Um, any likes or comments will be much appreciated and we'll make sure I can do more of these in the future. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.